Right, my name's Trevor Smith, and I, for a living, I provide animals for films, as you've probably suggest, television, commercials, movies. So I travel all over the world working with different types of animals, from tigers, which tigers have had before now. I've got nothing dangerous here today where tigers have pulled me down, crocodiles. I work with flies to hippos, the whole bit, everything. And every animal you see on the television or a film, it hasn't just been happened to a pigeon happened to fly past or a duck happened to quack and sit upright. It's been coordinated and sometimes it takes days and days and days getting the action and the animals all to work. So I spend all my time making sure that the animals are well looked after and I use animal psychology because I love animals myself. I know how the animals will work as animal psychology. Do you remember the film St Trillions? Well, if you've seen St Trillions, there's a, some, a shot where the ants are going up his trouser leg. Remember the ants all in the, when they were in the um, laboratories? <laughs> I took days and days and days getting the ants and every time they wanted to do the shot again and again and the man's trousers were absolutely full of ants and they were biting and biting me as well. So you've got to be really, really careful how you deal and play with things. So today we've got some... I like thinking of my animals as my little friends really and I've just got a few animals along with me today just to show you what animals are and how, how they work. When I'm dealing with reptiles, reptiles really like being handled because we're warm-blooded and they're cold-blooded and this is like one of the this is a typical snake i spend all my time petrifying people working on movies and my other half i like to show them how beautiful these things are now i know you're going oh, it's horrible but that to me is absolutely beautiful that is a milk snake it's copying a coral snake and there's a saying red to yellow will kill a fellow red to black venom lack so that's just a simple little snake and if he just likes being held. So would you like to hold the snake? You can have a little hold. But it really enjoys being held. Oh, he really does. It's taking the heat from you. I work with these an awful lot. And these were, we've done some of the animals on different horror films. Now that is an imperial jungle scorpion. There are 1,200 species of scorpion in the world. But I must obviously not use one that's dangerous. This is this is relatively harmless. So if you can see how beautiful that is. So I'm not going to do you. I think that's a beautiful creature. No, they can't jump. No, they can't jump. But when they molt their skin, they completely pull their whole self out of it. That's the venom sack at the end there. Right now, have you got any more any questions on filming so far with the animals, working on movies with animals? What? is the most toughest animal you had to deal with? The hardest animal in the world to deal with, you won't believe me when I say this, is a domestic cat. Because a domestic cat, if it doesn't want to do something, it won't. It will just say, nope. And it can be the best tame animal in the world. It's easier to work five tigers than a domestic cat. Have you ever worked with any endangered species? Yes, I have. And you have to have special CITES and paperwork with them. Yeah, uh, they give you special guidelines. The other thing is I quickly want to mention as well, just so you know about it. When you work on a, a film, a lot of people might say, oh, that's cruel, is that fair for the animals? By law, I have to have an animal performer's licence. By law, I have to have a vet on set. When we're filming, a vet has to be there. I need special paperwork, and the animal's welfare is above everything else. I'm a member of the Animal Welfare Filming Federation, so it's very important that the animal gets looked after. This is a very fast lizard, this is a water dragon. Now if I... I'll just touch some of the right bits. You can hypnotise all animals, and I can knock them out completely, and that's just touching the right bits. And I can do that with pigeons, ducks, rabbits, anything. I just bring him around again. And if I put him down, he would go like a cock So I've learned how to be able to hypnotise that. Sometimes when you get stressed, you rub the back of your neck. Well, there's pressure points there. And if you know what bits to touch, you can just put them straight to sleep. And it relaxes the animal nice and happily. So we do a thing called hands-on. So when you handle an animal, if you put your hands onto a horse or a dog, you can feel the way they're breathing. 
And if you relax, they relax. And if you're relaxed with the animals, I always try to turn it into a fun thing. I try to think of it when I go filming, the animals are having a fun day, you know, and I'm going to work. And if the animals can feel when you're relaxed, they're nice and happy. So that is a water, a very fast water dragon. So they do go, they do go quite quick. What is your favourite movie you have done or helped with? Well, that's a hard one because they're all, they've all got their own little bit. I really enjoyed the Secret Garden, believe it or not, because I was totally in control of the Secret Garden of all the animals on the Secret Garden. I liked that because every day I was working very, very hard. Did you um, train an animal but it didn't work in the movie? Y yes, I did. There was one uh, incident I had where I had to have a tiger had to swim in a, in a pool and the tiger um, got into the water and because it wasn't quite warm enough, it got out the other side and it wouldn't get back in. Now, this is called a chili rose, birdie spider. And she's been, in, she's been in loads and loads of films and movies and things. And again, do you remember some of the original James Bonds where he had it on glass, he, they wouldn't have it on them? I have, to, I have to train the actors to be able to handle the animals and show no fear. Now, with the tarantula, when it sheds its skin, the name tarantula is a name for it's quite a small spider. They used to do the dance called the tarantella. This is, in fact, a bird-eating spider. But underneath, you can handle her, but underneath she's got a whacking set of fangs. You see those? They're but if I showed you those, a lot of people go, oh, I'm not touching that then. But it's she's fine. She, won't, she doesn't want to hurt you. So there you go. That's the, that's the spider. And the same thing with them. You put them down. If you want the spider to keep still. I was working in Borenwood High Street. We'd done a film called Indiana Jones where we had loads and loads of cockroaches. And what you do, you put them under a board. You gently pat on their backs and hypnotise them. They keep still. And when you vibrate the board, off they went running. And the same thing with the drinking straw. So you make it go left or right. And that's it. And that's, and that's how you control the spider. After the first animal that bit you or scratched you, what made you continue to work with animals? My granddad always taught me uh, never to show fear to an animal. Uh, if an animal's going to bite or scratch or peck or whatever, you have to accept it and it's a part of if you ever show pain and go ah that's it they know it and you'll lose it so i just learned to accept you know just to to go with the flow basically it's not being brave but it's just understanding the animal really big round of applause uh, well thank you